de ba ye kene de mono asim ka nko ye chiri ya zelo asim mono tutu oma e ife oma mbo de oma stane ebi si wene sere enu bo sin keta na eastern is 24 ay sinon ya dero nyobu na na mma kada bundi ne sere eni nwa kupo ni ya ide ebe di chiche enu bo sin keta isi na nwa ya dera ni ibo na mma na ya ri ke echi na echi ya da gwa gwa Um, if I na boya bifa wo teru no bosin ka ta bifa na we bo morning tea ni dwa kwo e ya bo basta maka ya biye ne me na obuda ino ni mia ana basta maka ngolo wendi bona zo e di ko si de o woli e ah bia flam prime minister ku ni dwa kwo ngwe teru no kun ge ya bifa kun ge se ya bifa na ti ya lo nko ni funu chedo basta maka ye nda ni me o huga si ni dwa kwo di chiche no bosin ka ta na morning tea Um, the key in a gear be fair. Drop what are your own comments in it? What for other one? All right, over to you, sir. We're happy that the message of the liberation of Biafra is spreading across Europe and, of course, across the world. In Europe, from Austria to Belgium, from Belgium to Denmark, from Denmark to Finland, to France, to Germany, Greece. Ireland, Italy, Iceland, Israel, Malta, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Russia, Sweden, Spain, Turkey, and the United Kingdom, and of course, many more on the way. We are spreading like wildfire. My fellow Biafrans, it is no longer a news that the Biafra that we have all craved for for many years is happening not just in our lifetime but you are part and parcel of the liberation of biafra and you are part of the history you are not going to be told the story you are not going to be hearing the story from somewhere it's just that you are part and parcel of this history i am making today and so if you find yourself in this particular midst of these history makers you must be very very proud you should be proud and clap for yourself because when every other person were very skeptical always suspicious of simon Ekpa, always uh, finding fault on other people except themselves you stood up pick up the courage and trusted me and this is where we are today so you you don't know what you have done to yourself but in the next 10 years you will know that the decision you've made in 2021 or 22 or whenever you join or 23 was the actually the right decision that is shaping the history and the future of Biafra. When we started, Mazenam Dikano was kidnapped and extraordinary addition to Nigeria from Kenya. I told Biafrans that Nigeria has made the worst mistake in the history of Nigeria. And then, nobody knew what was actually coming. We started to pick the broken particles, one after the other. We picked the particles they broke after the kidnap from Kenya. We were bringing them together to form what you see today happening. How many of you have watched most of this sky Uh, sky fi movies where the uh, like the uh, movie of um um uh, swaznega or so where the iron machine will be melting and where you shoot at the machine the police machine the policeman the man will scatter the gun will scatter the man and then you need to come together you know after melting and then come back to life that was actually what had happened in the Biafra struggle. When Mazen Amdekan was kidnapped, the Nigeria government was bragging and they were making press release, press conference, how Biafra has been crushed. I was watching and observing. And of course, because the people that we are dealing with, both in Nigeria and those that were in Apobi, Nigeria, many of them were demons. I mean, demons, is really demons they started to go and do consultations to find out who simon Epa is and each time they make consultation 
they always tell them, ah, that guy is real. He's real. You need to stop him. You will need to stop him. And that was how the attack against me started. And the only reason was to stop somebody who is actually genuine. Because they were never, they were never genuine. So, I promised Biafrans that we are going to bring our freedom from diaspora. Many people still did not understand. Even many of you today who are here did not understand what I meant by that. That we will bring our freedom from, from diaspora. Because if you do not know where the rain starts to beat you, or how did they say it, you will never you know, know how rain is going to stop or where it is going to end. So what we did was to, first of all, study the situation of Nigeria, study how we can deal with these monsters and demons in the name of entity called Nigeria. And after solving the mathematics, we got the answer. We also know how to solve the mathematics. It's very, very easy. We went to work. We begin to gather all these particles together, which is some of you that are here today, you form major part of the particles. So, Nigeria thought that the way it was designed, that they have made everybody poor, that nobody can ever rise again to challenge the entity terrorist state called Nigeria. And the least expected place was Biafra. The least expected region that could ever rise, you know, rise up to fight Nigeria is Biafra. Nobody believed today, then, that Biafra will pick up arms to defend themselves. They never believed. In fact, nobody ever believed that the situation, Nigeria thought they have actually conquered everything that, you know, when you talk as a Biafra, they tell you about your business. They tell you about your properties. They tell you, how are you going to eat? So Nigeria government has actually destroyed the future of an average Biafra. Not only an average Biafra, they have destroyed the future of those who even believe in Nigeria. What did we do? We noticed that that is the only weapon they have against us. And we went to work. We start reshaping the mind of our people. And what do they call it? They say brainwash. How will you not be happy if somebody brainwash you to be strong? How will you not be happy when somebody brainwash you to stand against your oppressor? Ah, everybody will be very happy with that kind of brainwashing. But you know, the elite, those enablers are never happy with the way that every Biafra has actually waking up. The same people who during the COVID-19, they, they, they gathered all the palliative and locked it up. Another region was enjoying palliative from the government, but none, none, not even one bag of rice were shared to the Biafra people. In fact, the minister of the minister, a woman that was in charge of the palliative then, even openly, openly in public, said that the Biafra people will never receive any palliative. It is on record and the videos are there. That there are people yeah, are living abroad. And so they receive uh, money from their relatives. But not everybody has any not everybody in Biafra land have relatives abroad. But that was the conclusion of a Nigeria state over a people that they have refused to let go. So you know, after all this, everybody will relax. Nigeria succeeded in making sure that something happened today. It's just one week, everybody will forget about it. And they wanted to do it to Mazen and the canon. After they kidnapped him, they wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, nobody talked about him. So after I studied this thing, I said, what we are going to do is to make sure that the kidnap of Mazen and the canon will make sure that those who kidnap him will never, ever leave to tell the story. We started by making sure that uh, those who were bragging about the kidnap of Mazin and the Kano and how the Biafra movement have ended will be put to shame. We said that the kidnap is going to be very expensive. We started from there. 
today. It is very, very expensive. Today, the kidnap of Mazen Amdikana has become the most expensive commodity, the most expensive movement, the most expensive project that Nigeria has ever embarked on. It has cost everything that Nigeria never expected. I didn't going to end there. I also promised Nigeria that the kidnap of Mazen Amdikano will facilitate the Biafra to emerge as a nation. They thought it was a joke. So we use that kidnapping to become what we are today. That is the reason why Biafra is flying all over the world. And let me also tell you, I am aware that they have actually concluded to grant Mazen Amdikano bail this month. We welcome that. Go and mark my word. We welcome that. I just want to put it on notice to every Biafra. We have two goals. One is to release Mazen Amdikano by the activities of the Biafra government. Two is the Biafra freedom and the Biafra independence. That is the main goal. It was the reason Mazen Amdikano was kidnapped. And so, after they have released him this month, we will go to the, next, to the next stage. But I'm not going to talk yet until this bail is granted. I am also aware that I have even planned that the people that are going to come as a shorty after the bail has been granted this month will all be not on us. I know that maybe uh, after this now they're going to change it, but I don't want to talk much, you know, so that not to you know, influence anything, but we are very, very much aware of what has been agreed on, and we are going to be waiting very patiently for that. So Biafra must be on standby. Once he is released, our one of our objectives has been achieved, and then we go to the next one. And I believe you know what it means. So my fellow Biafra, today we have decided that the delegitimization of the Nigeria terrorist state within Biafra land will be taken to the next level. And that's why today we are locking down the Nigeria institutions in Biafra land because it is this institution that generate money, they generate fund to fund the terrorism against our people. So we are to poor ya gani rubiko uh metwaka na share button share ya be fe na no uh betwaka na subscription and turn on the notification or the nukumba fighting the source of the income of Nigeria. Not only that, if we are now an independent state, we are going to place sanctions on Nigeria. We impose economic sanction. And because we are not yet an independent state, we have to now figure out how to navigate this particular complex situation. Now we have navigated it. We have figured out how to impose the sanctions on Nigeria within Biafra land. And that sanction is the lockdown of every Nigeria institution for 30 days. Today is the fifth day. After these 30 days, and maybe they still did not release Mazen Amdikano on this particular September hearing, we will extend the lockdown of the Nigeria institution for 60 days. After 60 days, we will extend it to 90 days. I am telling you the fact. And this is going to continue until we will make sure that no office of Nigeria will be very, very opening in Biafra land. They will stay and they will be scared of staying in Biafra territory. That's our target because you can never allow a terrorist state to breed. No, we do not want to let them breed even one minute because one minute of breeding will bring arms to kill our people. So we will never allow them to breathe in Biafra land. So after these 30 days, we will give them maybe one week break and we'll come again for two months. And let me tell you, we are still, we still have a long way to go. 25 days is still remaining from the 30 days. 25. It tell those who think they have violated this particular order by the Biafra government will have themselves to blame. I am telling you the fact. So we will make sure that the delegitimization of Nigeria will continue to enter new, new dimension at every stage and every point in time. This stage one is this 30 days. 
And this will continue until we go to November when our convention will start on the 29th of November in Finland. And of course, by then, you don't, you don't need to know. I don't need to tell you what will be happening in Nigeria. Because you know now they have seen the green light and they are running up and down, consulting with the European Union, consulting with whatever they are consulting with, and all that. They even agreed and have paid one country heavily to hack, to hack into my account. And the country actually collected the money to hack my phone, to hack my ex account, to hack my to hack my email, and I tell them that I am in Finland, a nation of innovation and technology. <laughs> if you can hack my phone, and hack my email, and hack my ex account, then I know that Nigeria have actually done very well. That will never happen. So, but I'm aware that that is the plan and they have paid money this week, this uh, last week. And we're waiting for them. So my fellow Bia friends, we are going. I just want to encourage all of you, stay very strong, do not panic. We have beaten Nigeria hands down. Nigeria can never rise again. And just like the pronouncement has been given, Nigeria is nose diving and have nose dive. Nigeria is a collapsed country, is a failed state. It has met every requirement as a failed state. I don't understand whether many of us actually know what failed state is all about. There are, you know, there are requirements that, you know, the category where you categorize, uh, you know, a state and the state will become a failed state. Nigeria has met all these requirements as a failed state. They are now unable to solve their political and economic problem and crisis. And the Afro government is providing a solution to that. I am very, very happy that many of you that are here today are not just participants in what we are doing, that many of you are deep rooted and they have come to see and hear firsthand information about what the Biafra government is doing and what we are intending to do and how we are doing it. So you can also tell others, you know, I'm happy that the United Kingdom, for example, had a workshop the other day where they were teaching about the IOU, where they were teaching about the ID card and all that. That means that you are not just uh, a follow, a follow, follow. You are also, you know, into the government and knows what is going on. And that's exactly the way you should be. Those who are not yet uh, conversant with what we are doing, you teach them. You tell them. You explain to them. When they have the question, you explain and answer their questions. So it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We will protect every Biafran anywhere in the world, irrespective of whether you have tied my name as a baby and was dragging it in the street of Italy and other parts of Europe. It doesn't matter because I know those things doesn't touch me. You know, you are just being ignorant of who is Simon Ekpa, you know, and then you were misbehaving. So many people who were doing incantation with my name and all that, we even gave them followers in their platforms. When they, <laughs> when they, when they blocked all their, all their, all their platform, we created and asked people to go and follow them. Biafra went and followed them. So if, if they have succeeded in uh, silencing Simon Ekpa today, where would they be? What is going to be their, they would, they would just realize now, ah, we did not know we would have just allowed that guy. But the point is that, you know, I came to this struggle prepared. I came to this struggle. When I mean prepared, I came prepared. And it's just that many people don't know. If you think you can bring Simon Ekpa down, you waste your time. You just disgrace yourself and Simon Ekpa will continue to stand very strong. When I joined this struggle, I did not join to romance Nigeria. I did not join this struggle to start looking at faces. I joined this struggle with Iwe and Onuma. I am telling you the fact, and I've said this several times, many people don't understand what is Iwe and Onuma. Iwe and Onuma is the highest degree of anger. That's why I joined this struggle with. And I did not come to romance Nigeria. I come that Nigeria will end. I come that they will end the Usman Danfodio legacy. That legacy that every time they will be talking about Usman Danfodio. You will think that Usman Danfodio, you know, manufactured the airplane. You will think that Usman Danfodio manufactured a car. Or oh, he invented one, uh, one, uh, you know, uh, a machine or something like that. No. Usman Danfodio have a legacy for killing Northern Nigeria, for killing Aousas, conquering them. 
and turn them into what you see today outside Fulani. That is the legacy that Usman Danfodio brought to Northern Nigeria. And today, they have Usman Danfodio University. They are using him as that is what they, they continue that particular legacy. That is the reason why the Fulanis are killing innocent Christians in the Northern Nigeria and the Middle Belt. It is to continue the Usman Danfodio legacy. And I am here to end it. I will end it. The end of Usman Danfodio legacy will start from this year. Because he said. What I am telling you, go and mark it. It will start from December 2nd. Once we exit Nigeria, that legacy is gone. Completely gone. Because they will not have any other place to conquer. Is it us that you are going to cross our border to come and start saying you want to conquer Biafra? We did not conquer us when we were in Nigeria. It's not going to be possible. Another thing is that Biafras have seen that we have a map. That map has not been disputed by anybody. That is to show you how far we have gone. I am still waiting for the uh, intellectuals, as our leader used to call them, to come and debate or dispute the, the map of Biafra. And we have uh, administrators, every person have voted in all these 40 states. It is not, nobody is disputing it. And that should be, and I know that that is what is actually worrying these people. Because how did this guy come up with map? I did not come up with any map. The people themselves were the one who have, you know, presented them their map to Biafra government and we did not impose any map on anybody. That is the good thing about consultation and, of course, using a true democratic process to liberate the people. That's what we have done. And that is exactly what the uh, multidimensional approach means. Exploring every approach, every possibilities from every context, from every, uh, you know, from every solution that you can think of. And that's why we are using this multidimensional approach, the political approach, diplomatic approach, and armed struggle approach. When they hear armed struggle, ah, you want to carry arm against Nigeria, where are they today? When we started, all of you, when we started, where do you have the arms? Where is the money? What is happening today? And we are just started. That's why I told them, you can never defeat this army of Biafra. Never. Not in this generation. Not in generation to come. Not what to Juku and the Biafra army did in the 67 we were doing. We have learned our lesson. We dictate how this the how we are going to fight you. And we are fighting you the way we want. And there is nothing you can do to change the tactics of this fight. That is one thing I trust about the Biafra Defense Forces. Gra well grounded in what we are doing. You know, when instruction is given, they know exactly what to do. So you can never defeat us this time around. We will fight you until, even if it is one person that is remaining, not from the Biafra side, though, because we can never, we can never remain. It can never go bad that we are going to fight until we remain one. Never. But you see, Nigeria terrorist forces we will fight them until they remain one, and that one will be buried alive. Thank you very much. Biafra will come. You either allow us to go in peace or. You are going to remain pieces and Biafra will still go. And you see this thing we are asking now that you must recognize the Biafra referendum. It is going to end in the round table when, we, when the stupid and foolish ones have died in Biafra land. Because many of them, many of those soldiers, those terrorists they are sending, they are going to die, all of them in Biafra land. You cannot just come to kill us and we we'll watch you and fold our arms to watch you kill our women and children. It's not possible. So you will die in Biafra and your spirit will never be alive to witness the roundtable discussion of how they are going to accept the referendum of Biafra and how Biafra will come. Because it is going to come and it is going to happen. Everything happening today will end up in a roundtable. And we have prepared for that. I am telling you. We have given an offer, a very reasonable offer, engage Finland to come as a mediator. That offer is on the table. We have also offered them even flight ticket and hotel to come and be an observer for the Biafra's uh, convention in Finland. Since they say that Samanekpa is unreachable, it's an opportunity for them to come. That offer has been given. Is the reasonable? Is it shows that somebody is reasonable? And the only people that are reasonable is the Biafra government, not the Nigeria, because they feel that they are untouched. They feel that they cannot talk to anybody. They feel that they can use gun and bullet to suppress us like they do to every other thing that tried to rise in Nigeria. And I'm telling them today that uh, the, with the gun and the barrels of the gun, 
you can never defeat us. The more you bring gun, the more stubborn and the more strong we become. I am telling you the fact. So you can never defeat us. But you see, after the foolish people have died, the remaining one will still come to the table and we are going to discuss the partition mm -hmm. of Nigeria and Biafra. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you in Europe. Ebomane <laughs> Uh, drop on here on the comment section below. Also, the pocky be a bobbin and cab of a six guinea so you like a or in a four ya be on your eye, cabal, okay, like here, and turn on no notification. Share where code the quendoso, munai, the neighbor teacher, chaka, downloading any bomb and again. Okay, now the lanya, onion do ya put an hour, no number, came a siano, moon name.